Before the roar, there was a whisper. Before the darkness, there was a brilliant, blinding sun. On the island of Sumbawa, in what is now Indonesia, life in the early 19th century moved to the rhythm of the tides and the seasons. It was a world of lush green jungles, thriving coastal villages, and rich volcanic soil that promised abundance. At its heart stood a titan, a mountain the local people knew as Tambora. For a thousand years it had been a silent guardian, its conical peak reaching over 14,000 feet into the sky, often wreathed in a gentle crown of clouds. It was not a menace, it was a landmark, a source of life-giving water, a permanent feature of their world. The kingdoms of Pekot and Tambora flourished at its base, their cultures rich, their people secure. But deep beneath this tropical paradise, a cataclysm was brewing. Magma, the molten blood of the earth, was gathering. For centuries, pressure had been building in a vast chamber miles below the surface. A colossal breath held for an entire millennium. On the surface, the birds still sang. The sun still warmed the skin. But the ground beneath their feet was becoming a time bomb. The whispers of the earth were beginning, faint tremors that few recognized for what they were, the final strained warnings of a giant stirring from its slumber. The world had no idea that this single, beautiful mountain was about to hold the entire planet hostage. April 5th, 1815, the first blast. It was a sound of unimaginable violence, a concussive boom heard over 800 miles away. Mistaken for cannon fire, distant governors dispatched troops searching for a naval battle that wasn't there. This was merely the opening salvo. For five days, the mountain groaned and shuddered. Then, on the evening of April 10th, the world did not just shake, it tore apart. With a force that dwarfs any nuclear weapon ever conceived, Mount Tambora unleashed its fury. This was not an eruption, it was an act of planetary re-sculpting. Three colossal pillars of fire, gas, and molten rock ascended from the mountain's peak, merging into a single, terrifying column that clawed its way 27 miles into the stratosphere. So high, it reached the very edge of space. The sound was the loudest in recorded human history. An earth-shattering roar heard over 1,600 miles away. For those on the island, the sound was secondary to the horror that followed. Pyroclastic flows, superheated avalanches of ash, gas, and rock, moving at hurricane speeds, scoured the mountainside, incinerating everything in their path. The very sky turned to a raining fire of pumice and ash. Within hours, a radius of 350 miles was plunged into darkness more profound than any night, a suffocating absolute blackness that would last for days. The giant had awakened, and its first act was to turn day into night and paradise into hell. When the roaring finally subsided, an even more terrifying sound took its place. Silence. The island of Sumbawa was gone, 
buried under a thick gray blanket of death. The kingdoms of Pekant and Tambora had been utterly erased from existence. Their people, their homes, their entire culture suffocated and entombed in an instant. An estimated 10,000 souls perished in the initial blast and the searing flows. But the mountain's fury was not confined to land. The collapse of its massive cone triggered devastating tsunamis, sending waves crashing into the surrounding islands, sweeping away coastal villages and claiming thousands more. In the aftermath, a grotesque new phenomenon appeared on the ocean. Sailors reported vast rafts of pumice stone, some stretching for miles, so thick that ships could not pass. Entangled within these floating graveyards were the carbonized trunks of entire forests and, chillingly, the bodies of countless victims. The sea, once a source of life, had become an ocean of the dead. For the few who survived on Sumbawa, crawling from the darkness into a gray, toxic wasteland, the ordeal was just beginning. The ash poisoned the soil, the water. There was nothing to eat, nothing to drink. In the weeks that followed, starvation and disease would claim another 80,000 lives in the region, a slow, agonizing epilogue to the planet's most violent outburst. Tambora had spoken, and now the world would listen. The 100 million tons of sulfur dioxide blasted into the stratosphere did not simply fall back to Earth. It formed a vast, persistent aerosol veil, a global shroud that began to wrap itself around the planet, reflecting sunlight back into space. The year 1816 arrived, but summer did not. In New England, snow and a killing frost fell in June. July and August brought ice to the rivers of Pennsylvania. Across Europe, the weather turned biblical. Ceaseless, chilling rains led to catastrophic crop failures from Ireland to Switzerland. The price of grain skyrocketed. Food riots erupted in cities. Famine stalked the land followed by its grim partner, disease, as a new strain of cholera born from the altered climate in the Bay of Bengal began its deadly march across the globe. The sun, when it was visible, was a pale, weak disk in the sky. Sunsets were bizarrely, luridly spectacular, painting the sky in fiery reds and yellows that terrified onlookers and inspired the artist J. M. W. Turner. In Switzerland, a group of young English writers trapped indoors by the wet, ungenial summer passed the time by writing ghost stories. It was there, amidst the gloom and atmospheric horror created by Tambora, that 18-year-old Mary Shelley conceived of a monster born from unnatural science, Frankenstein. The volcano's shadow was long, touching not just the climate and the food supply, but the very heart of human culture and fear. The great chill eventually subsided. The sun returned. The world, scarred and battered, slowly began to heal. And then it began to forget. Unlike Krakatoa, which erupted later in an age of the telegraph, Tambora's story was scattered 
Its impact was so widespread, so seemingly disconnected, that for over a century, few understood the link between the summer snow in Vermont, the famine in Ireland, and the silent, decapitated mountain in Indonesia. It was a ghost in our history, a global catastrophe whose cause remained a mystery to most who suffered through it. Today, the caldera of Tambora is a vast, silent crater, a 2,000-foot-deep wound in the earth. It serves as a humbling reminder that our world is more interconnected and more fragile than we can imagine. The eruption of 1815 was a natural climate change event of staggering speed and severity. It taught us that what happens in a remote corner of the globe can bring Western civilization to its knees. It is a lesson etched in layers of ice cores and tree rings, a warning whispered on the wind. Tambora reminds us that we live by the grace of a delicate planetary balance and that the titans of the earth are not dead, but merely sleeping.